God. Good, good, evening. good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If y'all good tonight, y'all listen fast. You might get out of here if you can't tonight. Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta listen. If y'all start listening slow. <laughs> we might get out of here tonight, but no guarantees, no guarantees. So praise God. Let's go before the Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. There is no other God but you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for clothes in our closet. Thank you, Father God, for socks. Plenty of socks that we get multiple choices to choose from. Thank you, Father God, for vehicles are fixed that we can drive back and forth to work. Thank you, Father God, for the dinner that you gave us tonight. Breakfast is already there prepared for tomorrow and many, many days after that. Thank you, Father God, for the jobs that you've given us so that we can go to work and we can put our hands to it, Father God. Because yes. you said we prosper by the work of our hands, yes. the labor of our hands. We just thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. We love you, Father God, for your word that you've given us that we can write on our hearts and we are prosper. You said believe in the Lord thy God and believe his prophets and we'll, we'll prosper, Father God, because we're sowing your word, your word. And you do not hasten whatsoever to perform your word. We thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. As we take this new adventure to your word, Father God, we believe, Holy Spirit, you are unlocking these hidden truths, giving us fresh revelation. Some of this information that may go forth tonight, Father God, some of the people may have already heard it, and some of the people may have, have not heard this whatsoever, Father God. But we believe, Father God, that you are unlocking those things and making it afresh to those who have already heard it, Father God, and we believe, Father God, is since it's going to be something new to those who have not heard it, they're going to be able to grab hold to it. And then we all will be able to bring forth 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. We thank you, Father God. Yes. We love you and we appreciate you. Now I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. We covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen and thanks be to God. Turn your Bible to the book of Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Everybody there? Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. <laughs> verse 1. No. Well, yeah, that's verse 1. Look what it says. Again, Jesus began to teach beside Lake Galilee. The crowd that gathered around him was so large. Okay, I'm, I'm reading out of the uh, right. Good News Version Bible, okay. just in case some of y'all don't know that. Like, mm -hmm. what is the pastor? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I'm reading out of the Good News Version Bible, uh, but you, uh, most of you all probably have the King James Version, or you might have some other, some kind of translation. And if, if you follow mm -hmm. along, I believe that we all end up in the same, sp in, uh, in the same place. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to grab hold to this. I like the Good News Version. I, I, do, I, I might turn to the King James Version tonight, but I'm going to pretty much stay, try to stay with the uh, Good News Version for a moment. But let's get back into the reading. Look what it says. And Jesus came and began to teach beside Lake Galilee. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it. The boat was out in the water, and the crowd stood on the shore at the water's edge. He used parables to teach them. What did Jesus do? Parables. parables to teach them many things saying to them. Listen. That's a, uh, last week, we we'll, we'll started like the first, first series, first part of three messages. 
uh, entitling Exalting the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God will prevail in your life. Uh, the Word of God will prevail. You, you, have, you have to figure out you don't have to figure out. You you just have to make sure that you are confessing God's word. When you're confessing God's word, that word, whatever it is, whatever scenario it is that surrounds you, you have to go find. Well, if you you have troubles or some or, or something that you want to conquer, uh, let's let's like if you have children that are not saved, you got to go find. God's word, go in God's word and go to scripture and find scripture and confess that scripture based on your children need to be saved. Okay? Uh, uh, and you, that you find a lot of those scriptures all around. Especially like the one in the book of Deuteronomy. It uh, says uh, the peace of my children shall be. I mean, that, that's, that's the way I've translated it. Uh, uh, if I teach my children the great peace shall they have. Why? Because once they understand that Jesus Christ is their Lord, they'll have peace. You know, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, no, no other peace. Uh, he said, the world leaves kind of peace, but it's all jacked up and confusing. People think if you got plenty of money, then it produces security. Or if you got a house, it will produce security, which that will bring forth peace. That's not peace, because what if the money goes away? Then you have no peace. See, as a believer in Jesus Christ, if you believe, know that my God, if Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that becomes your peace. But then, no matter what challenges that you are walk into, God gives you peace that passes. Even though on the surface it looks like you may get put out your house, the lights may get cut off, everything else, but Jesus says, My peace I leave with you. So, while your children out there acting like a plum nut, you'll be able to be at peace because you know that God is going to protect them and they will, at some point in time, eventually repent and turn, and turn, turn back to the Lord that God. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Here, here you go. So, we went this, this, this installment of, what are you doing? What are you doing? So we understand that Jesus says, the uh, Bible tells us that God wants us to be able to, to have the same kind of lifestyle that he has. Same kind of lifestyle that he has. Remember we talked about God sits on the throne of holiness. God, he, he's around. There's no sickness. There's no disease nowhere. And that's because his word. He lives by his own word. And he empowers that word. What are you doing, computer? Electronics. I'm trying to use it. What are you doing? Okay. Um, let, let change the plans. So this thing fell, what it's going to do? I just go to good. Thank God for Betsy. Uh, Betsy. Mark chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 4 we understand that God wants us to live at the same level he's living at so with that being said Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 what does it say uh, verse 3 he says hearken good news version says listen good news version says listen he says listen he says hearken Behold, there went out a sower to sow. There went out a what? A sower. a sower to sow. A sower to sow. What did he say? And it came to pass as the word, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because had it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. 
and other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty and some sixty and some what? Hundred. Hundredfold. Now, I, I just kind of like read through that. I kind of like read through that, but I want you all to see what is what is what is referring to. He gives different sections, different things, different times, uh, different scenarios of where the word of God is being sown, or this seed person goes out to sow seeds, or confessing the word, confessing the word. What did he say? What did he say in verse four? And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell what by the wayside. And the fowl or the birds of the air came and devoured it up. What did he say next? And some, and some fell on what? Stony. Stony ground. So now you got two different kinds of two different kinds of summer. Yeah. Where you just take the seed and you just scattering it around. Yeah. You're scattering the seed around. And what's going to happen? If you uh, a farmer, if he goes and starts planting seed in the ground, most of the time you're going to, have y'all ever seen? Years ago, you see where people uh, take the big plows and they get the big old hole, they mm. dig a hole down yeah. through, through the field, and they take the seed and plant down up in each one of each, uh, down into into the inside. The dirt, his dirt on each side, and you got the hole right here. And they take the seed and plant it right down mm -hmm. through the hole. Right. Then they take the dirt and move it back over to cover to cover the seed up. Mm -hmm. Well, look what it says here. What it says in verse four. He says, he says, some fell by the wayside. If you don't get the seed right off in the middle of the, where the hole is, some of that seed will fall up over here on top of the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all looking at me, no, I see some of y'all looking at me like, well, why y'all doing it? Why y'all, why you teaching like this? This is what Jesus was doing. This is what Jesus was doing. He, this is the way he was teaching it. He was saying, some fell by the wayside because some of you all are not farmers out there. It looks as almost as if that I'm, I'm kind of boring. Thank you. You finally came back up. Thank you very much. <laughs> the thing, this thing was doing what it wanted to do. <laughs> doing what it wanted to do. So Jesus was teaching. He said some of the seed fell on, on, on either side by the wayside. So what happened when, when that happens? It, it, it comes up. It does the seed to come to spring up. I mean, but the, the, I mean, wow. see when he springs up, what happens? He says, "What the birds came and devoured that seed. The birds came and devoured that seed. Well, think about that. If you got the seed and you just you just set up there and planted it, fine. That's fine if it got off in the hole. But what happens to that seed?" If it doesn't get planted, right. it, just lays it just lays there. It just lays there. Look what it says in verse in verse five, and uh, he said in verse five, and some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth, which means it did the seed did not go deep enough into the hole. It didn't go deep enough into the hole. It didn't go deep enough into the what? Into the hole. Into the hole. Now look, look, look what he said. Okay, let me, here we go. Here we go. Back in verse 5. And some fell, some fell on rock ground. Some fell, and some fell, and they fell on rock ground where there was little soil. The seeds sown sprouted up because the soil was not deep enough. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Then when the sun came up, it burnt the young plants, and because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. And some what? Dried up. Now here Jesus is, <laughs> sitting on his little boat, a ship, sitting on a little boat. And he's teaching this multitude crowd of people off the seashore. Like if you go over here, we live in Florida, and you go down to the Gulf. You got a boat tied off to the dock, and you sitting there floating on the water, and everybody else on land. And here Jesus is just teaching this parable. Mm -hmm. In this case, if you don't know what a parable is, a parable it is an earthly story with a heavenly or spiritual principle. 
So I want you, the whole key thing is, I want you to be able to grab the principle here. That's, that's the whole point. So I said, you need to listen fast. Look what he says in verse 7. Uh, and some of the seed fell among thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants, and they did that, and they didn't produce any corn. But some, but some seeds, verse eight. What are you doing? What the world is some here? seed fell on good yeah, ground. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and yeah. some seed fell on good ground. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sister. I appreciate that. <laughs> and some seed fell on good ground, uh, and good ground, but and did yield fruit. That sprang up and increased. And did what? Increased. 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 What did it do? Increased. It increased. It increased. It increased. I want y'all to really, really catch hold of that. I want you to really catch hold of that. Because that is where a lot of us are at right now. We think we've been sowing seeds and we haven't. Okay. Okay. Pastor, how you gonna tell me I ain't been selling seeds? I'm not. Question. Do you have an increase yet? Well now, how long you been at it? Well I've been at it for 15 years. Some point in time the increase has to come forth. If you've been sowing a seed, the increase has to come forth. And see, and that and said, I don't say, here you go. Y'all want to argue with me. Look what it says. But some seed fell in good soil, and the plants and the and the plants sprouted, grew, and produced corn, and some had 30 grains, others 60, and others 100. Do you have an increase? No. Then question. Have you been sowing the right seeds? Have you been sowing it on the right ground? Have you been sowing it on the wayside? You have to sit down and really, really ask yourself this question. I, that's what I've been doing. I've been saying, Lord, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> something, it's something that I'm not doing because I know your word is perfect. And then as I was, as I was you know, if, you, if you've been consistently reading God's word, and you sit down and you go look in, in the scripture, and you say, okay, Lord, what am I doing wrong here? And before you know it, just like me, these scriptures just kind of like jumped out at me. Go back up. Go back up. Look what it said in verse, six, uh, verse 5. Some, some of it fell on rocky ground where there was little soil. The seed, the seed soon sprouted because the soil wasn't deep. What is it say in verse 5 again? And some fell on stony ground, and it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth. Had no depth. It did not go deep enough. It did not go deep enough. It did not what? Go deep enough. It didn't go what? Deep enough. So question, where are you sowing the seeds at? Not deep enough. You're not, where, where are you sowing the seeds at? That's true, not deep enough. But where are you sowing the seeds at? If you got a situation, you got to make sure that you're sowing the right seed in the right direction of that of that thing. It's, it's like you targeting that Lord. No, that's like if you 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 pay tithes, you pay the tithe. Every time you pay tithes, what does the Bible say? He'll open you up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that this should not be going up to receive. Not just if you pay, God gonna give you one revelation. Every time you pay tithes, God owes you something. He owes you some information. Now see some of y'all, y'all you know, never even thought about that. God owes you something every time. If you sow a seed, if you sow a seed, somewhere you're supposed to get a harvest. You're supposed to. How do I know it, you it's, the it's automatic. Take the right scripture, whatever situation it is, when it comes to your lesson like if you if you got a financial issue, <laughs> financial situation, you say, Lord. This money is not enough to meet the need. So I'm going to take this seed and I'm going to sow it over here into this local ministry or I'm going to give it as a tip 
um, uh, as an offer of this um, uh, money, and I'm going to sow this into this person's life. You know, say the, the world will call it a tip. I had to catch myself. You saw I just did it. The world will call it a tip. I'm not tipping them nothing. I'm sowing a seed. I'm sowing a seed. Right. That's sowing seed. That's sowing seed. Look what he says in verse 9. And Jesus concluded, listen, then if you have ears, listen then if you have ears. He's stressing it again. I really, really want you to pay attention to this. Sit up, everybody. Sit up. Look what he says in verse 10. When Jesus was alone, some of those who had heard him came to him with the 12 disciples and asked him to explain the parables. You have been given the secret of the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, but the others who are on the outside hear all things by means of parables so that they may look and look, yet not see. They may listen and listen and yet not understand. For if they do, did, they would turn to God and he would have forgiven them. Why would they need forgiveness? Why would they need forgiveness? Why would they need forgiveness? Think about that. Why would Jesus say they need forgiveness? He, God would have forgiven them because they didn't believe in the parable. They didn't believe what Jesus was teaching them. How many of you all have been doing that? Every time you try to talk to somebody about certain things, they hear you and then you know that they don't hear you right. because they go right back to doing what they did. Right. At that moment, if they go back to doing, I mean, revert back to something else, they need forgiven because they're in, at that moment they're in unbelief. That question, each and every one of you all in here, so every last one of you all out there. Question, how many of you all are sowing seeds. I'm not sure if I just that's food for thought. How many of you all have been sowing seeds? But then as soon as a challenge comes up, you're sowing the seeds when everything is good. But as soon as a challenge comes up, you revert back to what you were doing before. That's just like confession of what it's like you got a pain like me. I, I, uh, I did something to my back uh, last week. And I already know what happened or what I did to it because I was having back trouble before. And But my body, my God, well, you can see God. And the doctor even said, I can see your body healing. <laughs> and I said, well, look at God work. He saw God on that on x-ray healing my body. It's like, that's a cool thing to see God healing it. And then I had to, had to do some stuff. And, and I did something. And I've been having those challenges. And not one time have I allowed my mouth to go back and say, I'm in pain. I'm hurting. I can't do nothing. No, my, my lifestyle did not change. I still went on with the work. I went to school. I had to do what I had to do around the house. Why? My confession is, I'm going to go do what healed people do. What do healed people do? Healed people, they go to work. Healed people, they go spend time with their family. Healed people go on stand up and they're going to preach the word of God if they, if they are a minister. Right. That's what they're going to do. That's what he'll be. He, he'll people go. They don't. They don't go do what they supposed to get done. I'm not gonna revert back to it. So thus, therefore, I just because of the situation arrived, rose. What I did do was my God. My by Jesus stripes, I am healed. Based on quoting Second Peter. Based on quoting Isaiah. He said, "What what, uh, what, what does the Bible say?" Uh, in the Book of Proverbs, he sent his word and healed them. His word. His word. So here's the kicker, here's the kicker. Jesus says, these people, they need forgiven because they, didn't, they reverted back to doing what they were doing before. They didn't believe what was being said. Look what he says. He said, verse 14, he said, verse 13, I mean. Then Jesus asked them, don't you understand this parable? And they did. How do we know that they didn't? Because they came yeah. to Jesus a few seconds ago, yeah. uh, just, in the very, just a couple of scriptures up. And they said, Jesus, please explain to us what you was even talking about. Look, look how Jesus responded to them. He says, how then will you ever understand any parable that I'm going to teach if you don't understand this one? Jesus saw this parable of the seed of the sower as one of the most basic principles, uh, basic principle, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Holy Spirit? You gave it to me the other day. 
the, the, the I, I, I use the base. I use fundamental. It's a fun, the word fundamental means uh, uh, elementary, mm -hmm. something simple. It is the most basic principles that the kingdom of God will ever teach. My suggestion to you, if you you need to go read the whole Mark chapter four, mm -hmm. because when you get to the end of Mark chapter four, Jesus had been teaching them to sow the seeds. And, and, and live based on this principle, you sow seed, you get a harvest. You sow seed, you get a harvest. You live by faith. You call those things that be not as though they were. Jesus was teaching them this, and then by the time in the chapter 4, it was time to go to the other side, and Jesus was tired. They were teaching all day to this big old multitude crowd. He went to sleep in the boat, and then Satan knew what was going on, because Satan even got the principle, and they tried to kill. He tried to kill Jesus in the boat, and then Peter and everybody else got scared. Jesus, don't you care we die? He said, oh yeah, if you go read it, go read it. Go read it at the very, very end. Jesus, what, look at verse 40. He said, uh, verse 4, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? How you still no faith? He said, I've just been teaching y'all faith all day long, and you didn't understand it. You didn't understand it. So look, 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 go back, go back over to verse 14. Look what he says. The sower sows God's message. The King James says word. God's message. That's what I like with this word when it says message. Because you go into God's word, and you go into the and like just sticking with sticking with the finances. Because I can say you can put this on any in any situation, any challenge that you have. But you go in there and uh, uh, you have a financial challenge, and you go to Deuteronomy chapter eight. Deuteronomy chapter eight says, "Remember, it is the Lord that God that giveth thee power to get well. He giveth thee power to get well." He giveth the power to get well. Why? To establish his covenant that he swore with the, with our ancestors. With our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God gives me power to get well. God gives me power to get well to establish his covenant. So God is not opposed to you getting wealth. He is opposed to you getting wealth if you're going to use it for maliciousness and, and doing some other kind of crazy stuff. So he doesn't care about you having money. He just don't want the money to have you. He wants you to be able to sow. He wants you to be able to give when you need when it's time to give. When the money comes in, you gotta be you gotta be able to pay your tithes and then give an offering and then sow any other kind of seeds that you can sow in the people's lives. Come on, people. Look what Jesus said. Look, look what he said. Look what he said. Some people are like, some, he said verse 15, some people are like the, the seeds that fall along the path. As soon as they hear the message, Satan comes and takes it away. Think about that. Satan is acting like a bird in this instance. He comes to take it away. Why? Some of you all sitting in here right now, and hopefully not, I hope it's not, and some of y'all may be out there, you're hearing me teach this stuff right now. And all of a sudden, Chicken right across your brain. You think about work. You're thinking about school. You're thinking about going to play games. Or you're thinking about this. Or you're thinking about that. It's running across your brain. And all of a sudden, what's going on while I'm teaching that? Who's, who's that putting that thought across your brain? That's Satan doing that. Why? So he can steal that message. So he can steal that word. Because he knows if you get hold to the information, to the message, he won't be able to operate in your life. Me and my wife was discussing this afternoon. Well, we really, really was. It's, it's kind of cool. Been calling all this line. He thought about it. We were discussing. It's like what happened years ago, before Revelation came forth. You sent all these messages. You heard the Creflo Dollars. You heard the Joel Osteens, and you heard the T.D. Jakes, and, and you heard the Joyce Myers, and you heard. Uh, uh, years ago, Billy Graham, and you heard you heard uh, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of other ones. Anybody that you, that's out there, you heard all of them preaching the words, and all of a sudden, you, you you're hearing it, and then you, you heard them, and then it didn't make any kind of real uh, resonance in your life. No revelation came forth. And then all of a sudden, you come across me 15 years later, and you hear Pastor Ivory teaching it, and you're like. I heard Creflo Dollar teach that 10 years ago. Revelation finally came forth. The seed was there, 
And all of a sudden, just the light bulb clicked on. And you're like, man, I'm not going back to doing that dumb stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, like me, mm -hmm. I, as much as I, I, I like, oh, Lord Jesus, what, what was it like? As much as I like Pepsi and Reese's at one time, I know if I eat that, it's going to do something to this body. And, it, and I can't go out and roll. So my wife, you know what we had for dinner tonight? We had, uh, 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 had beans. Uh, beans. <laughs> <laughs> Salad <Beats. laughs> and rice, and that was it. <laughs> My wife keeps talking about some beef. I ain't eating no heart. <laughs> That's not all right. <laughs> I'm not eating hearts. That ain't gonna be hearts. Like, what blood all on it? Just eat that stuff. <laughs> Lord Jesus said, let me get back to what Jesus said. Look what Jesus said in verse 16. Other people are like the seeds that fell on rocky ground. As soon as they hear the message, they receive it gladly. Uh oh, they receive it gladly. But it does not sink deep into them, and they don't last long. Why? Verse seventeen. So when, so when trouble and persecution comes because of the message, they give, they give up at once. They what? They give up. How many times have I told you all? When you sit here with me. And I'm teaching, or you sit somewhere else and you're hearing God's word. You're hearing God's word. If you don't grab hold to it, you might not be able to grab hold to it at this moment, but go home, sit down, and then meditate on what you were was taught. Right. Now, think about what you're thinking about. And you think about it, and you think about it, and you think about it. That's you at that moment bringing back up what was taught and regard you, you, you the bible calls it yeah the bible says it it says that the bible calls it like a cow you're chewing the cud you 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 you're taking what the cow would eat grass today and then later on in the evening the cow will have the way in his stomach and sound kind of gross to regurgitate that stuff back up and then chew it again and then swallow it back down oh well, that's what you need to be doing with the word, as you're saying, that's gross. <laughs> you, you're meditating on it, and you, you're making sure that it, it becomes a permanent fixture, not just in your thinking, but then also ultimately in your actions. And I'm about to, I've had, that's what I used to have trouble with. Now, I can just sit, and I can just sit there and be looking off into space and, and be meditating some scripture, or I get to speak in tongues, head over us, and meditate on the scripture, head over us, shutting in the morning. Thank you, Father God, you shall say, you shall supply. Father God, you said you want us to be partake, you want us to be partakers of your divine nature. Father God, you will bring back to my memory those things that I've already, I've already heard. I just thank you, Father God. Father, and you, and you do that, and before you know it, 15, 20 minutes been gone by, and you didn't meditate on God's word 15, 20 minutes, and now it's coming forth in your life, and you understand it, and people begin to see it in your actions, and then before you know it, the harvest starts coming forth. Glory to God. This is good stuff right here, man. Look what he said. We almost do. We almost do. No, Look what he says, uh, 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 verse 18. And other people are like the seed sown among the thorn, thorn bushes. Yes, yeah. There are the ones who hear the message, but the worries about this life, the love for riches, and all other kinds of desires mm -hmm. crowd in and choke the message, and they don't bear fruit. That's right, they come up. And that's where a lot of us are at right now. We, soon as we heard the word, we got it, we go home, we start to try to do, the, I mean, start to try to meditate the word so that we can really, really get this on the inside because the, 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 the ground, which we're referring to right now, is your heart. It could be unbelief, it could be unforgiveness, it could be hatred, it could be any kind of uh, uh, lasciviousness, uncontrollable desires. And all of a sudden, you start sitting down meditating the word based on your family member need to get born again. And all of a sudden, because the cares of this world show up, phone ring, Bill, got to do. Phone ring, girl, you going to come hang out with me tonight? Phone ring, girl, hey, dude, hey, hey, hey we going to get together. We're going to have a 2 o'clock meeting tonight in the, in the, in the morning. You, you know what I'm talking about. And they're winking through the phone. You can see that they're winking through the phone. You know what they're talking about. The cares of this world. And while you sitting there, should have been getting the message, meditating the word, 
the cares of this world will crowd in and because your desire is more so to that than it is to this, you don't know how to tell that stuff no yet. What, what did the Bible say? What did the Bible say? The cares of this world come in and it choke that message out and then people don't get bare fruit. And then before you know it, you go through this long drought of life, this season where no fruit is being produced. What do you say verse, verse 20? But other people, everybody say, I'm a but other people. I'm a but other people. Are like the seed sown in good soil. They hear the message, accept it, and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Look at verse 21. Look at verse 21. And we're going to pause it up here. Look what Jesus does. For the next two verses, verse three verses. We're going to get to it real quickly. Jesus continued, does anyone ever bring in a lamp and put it under a bowl or under the bed? I know. He gives a reference. If you got a lamp, Jesus is saying the message that I'm teaching you right now is a lamp. It should be a lamp for your life. So that's going to give you light. That's going to bring forth that peace. That's going to give you hope for a, 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 a brighter future. So hey, I may be having challenges right now, but I know I can sow a seed and it's going to eliminate that challenge. And you, you, and you trust God. He said, look what it says. Doesn't he put it up on the lampstand? Whatever is hit, hidden away will be brought out into the open. So are you hiding the seeds away? Are you hiding, when you plant the seed, are you hiding them away? Yeah. So guess what? The seed is eventually going to come forth. And whatever is covered up will be uncovered. Will be I've heard people take that scripture and they'll try to say that is referring to your sin. And you know, to a degree, that is true. But Jesus is not referring to your sin right now. Because I want my sin to stay covered. I promise you I do. It's up under the blood. I don't need my sin out at all. What about what you did the other day? That's under the blood too. So that means you may or say you still, you know, we not even, you know, you, your mind is so sin conscious. I'm trying to get you, we trying to get you to the point to where you prosper now. Hmm. Trying to get you to the point to where you prosper to where, guess what? Sin won't even have a, a, an attack to you. you. You won't even be able to grab one. Can't nobody go through this life and not commit sin. Jesus did. He set the example. Mary Magdalene did, right after Jesus forgave, he said, go and sin no more. I don't remember any documentation or scripture or anywhere else when Mary Magdalene committed sin again. Which lets me know, I personally believe Mary, Jesus' mom, right after Mary made some dumb, stupid statements, I personally believe Mary didn't go commit sin anymore. Because think about it, this same woman who gave birth to Jesus, at some point in time, she eventually had to confess that Jesus was Lord too. Mm -hmm. She sure did. She had to. That's how you get born again. That's how you get born again. So, why? The seed was sown. Look what it says. Verse 23. Jesus repeats it again. What did he say in verse 23? Anyone have ears, have ears. Anyone have ears to hear, let, let them hear. hear. Jesus said it again. Listen to what I'm saying. So also, three separate occasions where Jesus taught this principle, about as long as I'm teaching it to you, he taught it to them. He said, hey, get this. Get it. Get it so that you can have a future with when your seed, if you sow a seed today, by the time you get to your future, the harvest will be there and you'll have something to use. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, just, let's just, let's just, just, just go add verse 4, 24 now. I got one minute. He said, what did verse say? He said, he also said to them, pay attention to what you hear. <laughs> verse, verse 24, and, good, and the King James says, and he said, take heed to what you hear. What, with what measure you meet, 
it shall be measured to you, and what you that ye hear shall be more, shall more be given. So now if you go down and you sit down and you listen to teachings like this consistently, it will give you more information so that you can go out and use it to bring forth harvests in your life. Glory to God. I got that, Lord. If you hear stuff like this more and 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 more. More and more and more. You hear more messages on healing. You hear more messages on prosperity. You hear more messages. And, and sometimes it will almost become, is that all you sit up and do is watch preaching? No. But I listen, when I'm really, really paying attention, when I'm really hearing it, I grab hold to it and I can easily go sit down and watch uh, uh, Marvel Agents or S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it'd be easy. I can easily go do it because I've heard this and I'm going to keep hearing Because in 10 years, I may need it again. Matter of fact, I know I'll need it again because Satan ain't playing. He's always trying to figure out a way to cut up. Hmm. Hey, remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. Go sow a seed and believe God that the harvest is coming forth. In Jesus' name.